What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Lean to Mean Academy. Today, we are talking about what makes a great website. Obviously, we've had a few videos in this series with my good friend, Chris Lonergan. He's here on the line from Footbridge Media. What's up, Chris? How's it going, Aaron? Dude, y'all are killing it over there, eh? Yeah, we're keeping busy. <laughs> busy, man. I love it. I love it. Back from the holidays. Today's video is, uh, you know, talking about building a website for the customer right? We know that guys come into the game and they have an idea of what they want in a website, but that's not always the best thing for ranking or for what a customer may want. Chris, tell me a little bit about that. Yeah. So at the end of the day, you know, it, it's not that you shouldn't have, you know, an investment in, in what your site looks like and what you sound like, but you got to recognize your marketing is not for you and your preferences. It's what your clients dictate. It's what they need. You, know, you got to meet them where they are for all of their needs. Um, so we'll make it look like what you want it to look like. But at the end of the day, remember your customers are the most important part of that math. Absolutely. So, you know, we, we had three things that we kind of went through before we got on the call here because we really want to, you know, give these guys the most value and not take up too much of their time, pack it out here. So three things. The first thing is design. How do you and, and what do you do when you're building a website for a customer? What's in the design process that kind of caters to that? Absolutely. So you've got to make sure that your website looks good, number one, that, it's, that it looks modern and up to date. You don't want an old looking website because you want to look like a fresh new company. And you got to remember you're designing for your customer's preferences. Again, you got to have your branding in there. That's important. Have your logo, have your colors. But you've got to recognize that we need to put the information out there that number one, that your customer wants. And number two, that search engines are looking for. Those have to be priority. So you may not like a lot of words on the website, but Google requires that there's some words in there and some specific orders to make some stuff rank. And you may not like to have a whole bunch of pictures on a single page, but again, customers are gonna to wanna to look for that. Customers are gonna be interested in what your work looks like. So get that information on the right parts of the website so that your customer and that search engines can engage with you more. So, you know, when it comes to design, I love that. When it comes to design, you know, you're, you're talking about visually but there's also, I know a lot of your magic is behind the scenes in your schematics and, and your schema, shall we say, of how y'all layer things and how y'all silo things. You don't have to give away any of the secrets. Because <laughs> I know a lot of guys right now who have footbridge don't want you to talk about the secrets that you guys are doing on the back end because their stuff's ranking really well. But kind of go into that a little bit as far as how you're structuring these sites, because that is design but it's something that's not often talked about on the surface beyond photos, beyond, you know, some of the uh, paragraphs on the page or the service pages. Absolutely. Like you kind of alluded to, it's almost like architecture. Like you've got to have the right bones and the right structure to make it easy for search engines to, to learn about what the company is. Sometimes you've got to spoon feed some data to Google. You're talking about schema code and that, that sort of things. Make sure Google really understands your business on the code backend stuff that unless you, you know, look at the, the ones and zeros of the website, you're never really going to realize it's there. So make sure you've got that structure, that architecture in place, and that you've got the right targets basically for Google to try to optimize for. That's why, you know, we've talked about project posts a lot. That's why those are so popular. Popular and effective. Right? Absolutely. That's incredible because I, I know I've said this before, but it still blows my mind for commercial pressure washing down uh, where my brother lives, right? He's got y'all's site and he, his project page ranks above other people's homepage. Yep. And I'm like, that's, that's not technically supposed to happen, <laughs> <laughs> but it's happening. It, it blows me away. So obviously the architecture behind the scenes is the secret that goes into the, the footbridge process, right? On what y'all just do every day. So design for a lot of us, you know, pressure washing dudes who just spray water. We're like, man, just make it look good, man. Hey, <laughs> you know, get my photos up there, get my team, get my stuff. You know, obviously you guys write all the content because Lord heavens, if you left it to us, it would never <laughs> get done. So you guys write all the content and do all that. But there's also, Behind the scenes, I'm aware of the magic and you're aware of the magic that goes into that schema code and how y'all are layering things out. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. It's definitely, you know, it's the art and the science of it. You got to have the visuals that look nice and then the back end, you know, the, the brawn that makes it run. I love that. I love that. So number two, we were talking about is keywords. 
Um, tell me a little bit about some of the conversations that you've had with some guys who are wanting to optimize for certain keywords and, and what you would like to do about that. Yeah. So, I mean, you, you know, if, if you're a pressure washer and you know your business, you know that, you know, you only use soft washing on certain services because that's the best way to get the job done. But the average homeowner doesn't really know all the terminology in most of the, of the U.S. You know, they're, they just know they need their house washed or they need their roof cleaned. They don't know the specifics about, you know, the, the technical terms that make it work. So we've had a couple of contractors that we've talked to say, oh, I want to change my name to soft washing or I want to I want to, you know, uh, make sure my, my keywords are all optimized for soft washing terms. And we've got to take the step back and know that we can do that, but you're not going to have the big an audience. Homeowners understand pressure washing or exterior washing. So when it comes to keywords, you've got to know and understand what your prospective customer is searching for and address those things, target those things. And then when they get to your website, you can educate them. Or when you get on their, on their driveway, you can educate them and let them know, hey, here's why soft washing is the best option for you for your roof or for your siding uh, and make the sell there. And then you can, you know, hopefully overcome any objections and get them to trust you over another vendor at that point. I love it. So like using little kind of um, long tail stuff, more like low pressure house washing, you know what I mean? Stuff that alludes to that soft wash process is something that you know you would probably use because I do I do come across that time to time where guys are like I want to I want to be the soft wash king and it's like well you and I know about soft washing but Janet down the road she's just like I've heard that you shouldn't use high pressure on my roof that's all she's heard she doesn't know the term soft washing so optimizing for it is what you're saying would not be the best thing because google knows pressure washing they have that category they don't have a soft washing category yet in, in google my business it doesn't exist so pressure washing service is the category and so what you're saying is guys you know you'll do it if they push and like you know you know hit you all the time about yeah. it you'll do it but it's pretty much uh, the results are hands off at that point. Yeah, I mean, and there are some very rare instances where we've done the research and we've found that some areas soft washing really takes off. So that's why it's important to have, you know, a vendor that definitely understands, you know, the industry, you know, certain parts of the, the Northeast soft washing is popular for some reason. Wow. But, okay. but for most homeowners, they don't really know, like you said, what that is. They, they know about it. And that's why our content, you know, it's still important to talk about it. Like you said, on a roof cleaning page, we'll still mention low pressure, no pressure and soft washing, but that's not the primary focus. We want, you know, roof cleaning in that example to be the, the main focus. I love so that. yeah, at the end of the day, let, let's talk about it, but we're not going to make that the only thing we talk about on the website. Absolutely. See, this is like, this is that stuff that you guys do every single day of the week, man. And it's like, I, I can only imagine if I were to go back because I remember the first year with my Wix site. All right. I remember it was dark time <laughs> before times <laughs> it was medieval, medieval <laughs> out here, bro. It was like little rats running around, bro. There's no food, no food, man. And, uh, so it's just interesting, you know, when we're, when we're talking about what you guys offer for the price you offer it and, and how much thought and how much knowledge over time of what even Google is wanting and what the public is wanting and what they're typing in in order to triangulate a result for the client. Yeah, at the end of the day, there's, you know, what works in, in one city and state doesn't work in another city and state. So even aside from just knowing about, you know, the term, we've got contractors all over the country. So we've got a pretty good pulse on, you know, whether we've had customers there before or whether we've done the research to know what works there and what doesn't. There's a lot of variables, even with something as simple as pressure washing, that, that one term. There's so much that goes around that. So keywords, number two, number three, methods of contact and scheduling. Tell me a little bit about the importance of, of this when it comes to uh, building a website for the customer. Yeah, at the end of the day, you want to meet a customer at their comfort level. You want to be able to have them communicate with you in whatever, they, they, whatever way they want to. We've had some contractors in the past who say, I only want my leads texted to me or, or only emailed to me, or I don't do email. I only want to get phone calls. Again, it doesn't matter what you want in that instance. If you want a client to contact you, then they have to contact you in the way they want to contact you. So you have to have web forms. You have to have your phone number on the website. 
you know, if you want to tell people they can text you, that's totally cool as well. If you want to set up a chat bot on the website, all these different or scheduling software, all these different avenues, different ways for people to reach out to you and connect to you, the, the easier you make it on a customer, the easier it is for them to give you their contact information. I think it's funny, you know, these people who come to sites, I've always found to be very high intent customers in the buying process. Um, when you have like a yard sign sometimes, or even Facebook ads, sometimes you have a lower intent to buy It's because it's, it's an interruption based type where someone had to type in pressure washing or house washing to even find it, right? This person is seeking out this service and they've indicated that by typing it in on their little cell phone and you're popping up. Whereas a yard sign, they're like driving by it and they see it, you know what I mean? And they're like, oh, I don't really know what that is, but we might call it. So when they get there, giving them all avenues, right, to reach out to you could be the difference in thousands and thousands of dollars at the end of the day, just by uh, giving them all options. Absolutely. And yeah, I mean, there, there are so many different customers and so many different preferences that people have, you know, we've had different customers in different industries get, you know, one of their biggest leads ever at two o'clock in the morning, you know, so that, that person, if you didn't have your phone call, if you only had your phone number on the website, you would have missed out on a big contract, a big lead. So oh. you've got to be able to, you know, be there for your customer in whatever way they want you to be there. I'm going to make it on my site, Chris, we're making it official today that they have to mail, they have to fax me. <laughs> yeah. Morse code only accepted for leads. Yeah. You have to fax Aaron if you would like for him to clean your house. <laughs> <laughs> so that's awesome, man. That's th our three points for today, guys. We're going to make this short and quick. I love it. Um, how to build a website for the customer, not you. Okay. We, as the, as the contractor don't matter as much, obviously as the customer, we're trying to get customers. So design, is huge, not only on visuals, but also schema on the back end, keywords, making sure that we're optimizing for what people are actually searching for, not what we think we want to brand for, what people are actually searching for, and making sure that your methods of contact and your scheduling are catered to the customer, okay? Not just us. If you need to get a call team or something like that to handle the calls, do it. If you need to get a chat bot with an app, Footbridge has got, you guys still have that. You yep. guys still have that availability to where it sends it right to their phone and the chat bot will uh, send right to their phone. That's amazing. If you need that, get that. But that is our three pieces of today about how to build a website for the customer and our series, What Makes a Great Website. Chris, thanks for coming on today, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. We'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks.